currently at the shop right now getting uh, its AC system evacuated. Once that's done, I'll be going taking it home and work on the AC evaporator, the AC expansion valve, so on and so forth. And once we're done with that, I'll head back to the shop and then we fill the system. Okay, so it's already been about half an hour uh, of this truck at the shop because I went there to evacuate my AC system. So there's no R134A on this truck, uh, which that R134A is the refrigerant that I that's used on this vehicle. So all that is removed. Now I'm heading back to my house and I'm gonna start working on the AC evaporator and expansion valve, which is located right behind my glove box and replace that pressure switch and stuff like that so at least I, I know that stuff is new and then I'll be working on the AC dryer which is located in, in front of the vehicle right next to the condenser once I'm done with that I'm gonna head back to the same shop where I got the AC evacuated have them refill it hopefully my AC will work all right let's start getting to work I also went to Harbor Freight the other day to grab this parts holder, magnet parts holder, AC, expansion valve in here, the evaporator itself is here, and the AC dryer is here. So, I'm going to be putting all my time and energy on the evaporator first and the expansion valve since that's the one behind the dashboard because this part is actually right in front of the vehicle right next to the condenser so that will be easy to get to so wish me luck guys okay now normally when i do photo compilations when it comes to me fixing cars i normally be silent but in this case since there's no other video out there that shows you how to work on ac evaporator core on a second generation toyota 4runner with the v6 i'm gonna go ahead and talk this out for you guys now just like any other car that you buy the AC system is going to consist of two hoses, a high pressure hose and a low pressure hose. Now in the second generation Toyota 4Runner with the 3.0 liter V6, there's actually this large cylinder shaped thing that I have absolutely no idea what it is actually for. All you need to do is actually uh, take a 10 millimeter socket or a wrench and those bolts that you that bolt that you're seeing on the left, you actually remove that. And there's actually another bolt next to the other side that you also need to remove where the hoses are at. So once you loosen those two bolts, what you're going to do is lay down that cylinder shaped thing. Just lay it down and then it will have easier access to actually get to those two hoses, the high pressure and the low pressure hoses. I honestly don't know exactly what size these bolts are, but one of them was actually a 19 millimeter uh, wrench. All I did was use a open end wrench and occasionally I did use a flare nut wrench and all you need to do is just loosen them up and then this is what you're going to get. Now since I got the two hoses out I'm going to go inside the car and remove the glove box and then I'll get access to the evaporator housing. Here's the evaporator housing. There's two bolts right there. Two bolts right there. The one over here. There should be one back there. Uh, the other one here, so that's about a total of seven bolts, 10 millimeter bolts. And then I'll take these electrical connections out. In the second set of the photo compilation there, as you can see, I am removing my glove box. And now I also remove the evaporator housing off its area. And here it is. This is the evaporator housing with the evaporator inside. All right, evap, sun, evap core housing is out. Just held down by these two electrical connections there was a screw there was a phillips head screw that was holding it in place so here it is there's the evap core itself on the original housing i'm also gonna um, get to that expansion valve and this pressure sensor over here or pressure switch all right okay so I just want to do a little bit of a comparison between the two. So this is the new EVAP core. Here's the old one. Um, I don't suspect any leakage is coming here because I thought at first there was some sort of leak, but it turns out to be not. 
probably this pressure sensor is not delivering any the signal to the to the vehicle and that's probably why my AC compressors keeps kicking in and out rapidly and not blowing cold air into the vehicle but since I'm already here why don't I just change the whole thing out so uh, here it is here's the expansion valve over here which I also have in that white box over there the pressure switch right here and um, yeah and then I'll just trade put these hoses and put it onto the new expansion valve but first I'm going to put the new o-rings o on and seal them up with some pad 46 oil so all right we're making progress people I almost forgot uh, on this case on this forerunner I'm actually using pad 46 oil uh, what the reason why I say to actually use that is so you can actually both one lubricate the o-rings and also uh, at least have some oil inside so uh, from what I've heard is if you don't do that you're probably gonna probably destroy your AC system and this could be all done for nothing that's from what I've heard I could be wrong but all I heard is you should at least use some pack oil in the AC system I forgot to actually take some photos of how to actually get this thing out of the evap housing but basically uh, to remove the evaporator core from the housing is essentially pretty simple there's actually a couple of clips and a couple of screws that you need to re to remove and then the entire housing just comes out and that's it so here's once again the original evaporator and the new evaporator core and now i'm actually going to be removing the old parts from the hoses that you're seeing here and putting the new ones in I just also want to remind you that if you're going to get that pressure switch out of the hose, uh, just keep in mind that that thing could be stubborn to get out. Because I was having some issues trying to get it out and um, trying to get it out, I almost completely bent the, um, the hose. But good thing it's still intact. So all I did is grab two wrenches and then just loosen them up and then I was able to get it out. So here's the old and the new AC pressure switch. And here's the old and the new expansion valve. Now, with that being said, it's time for me to go ahead and put everything together. As you can see, the expansion valve and the pressure switch is now back on there. The hoses are now connected. Now it's back into the housing. And since you're already at this point, just go ahead and reinstall those clips and uh, put the screws back into the housing. And then, yeah. For those who follow my channel but are not really very knowledgeable about cars, um, if you guys are probably wondering what the heck is that little thing that's pointing to the, towards the floor on the bottom right, that's actually a pipe that actually goes towards the outside of the car uh, and what actually goes out there is the water because inside the evaporator housing it actually creates condensation so uh, water needs to find a way to get out of there so they put that uh, pipe there that points outside to the vehicle so water can come out so if you're wondering what's that that clear wet stuff on the bottom of the vehicle and it's not and it's not green or any it's just clear or any there's no other color but clear that's actually just water that's, that's coming from this so if you're running your ac all the time especially in the summer and you see a little small water puddle on the bottom of your car don't worry that's just from condensation that's actually coming from the water inside your evaporator core now with that being said, it's time to put this evaporator housing back into the glove box area and it's held down by 7 bolts and put the screws back in that hold the electrical connections together and reconnect your connections and you're pretty much done with it on this section of the car. I also forgot that there's actually two holes in the firewall where the evaporator housing hoses actually pops out to the other side of the vehicle where the engine bay is at. Uh, you want to route those hoses in there so you'll be able to screw the bolts back in on the other side All right Evaporator housings back in I'm gonna put the seven bolts back in and reconnect these electrical connections All right AC evaporator has been replaced. This is the next step the dryer Held down by two bolts on the top and one bolt is holding there on that bracket. How careless of me. I forgot to show you how to actually remove the grill off of the second gen 4Runner. Okay, in the second gen 4Runner, there's actually two uh, screws that's holding down one parking light on each side of the vehicle. All you need to do is just unscrew them, and then the parking light will eventually come off. 
And then on the grill itself, there's actually uh, two sets of little tabs that you're gonna need a small yet long flathead screwdriver to remove. All you need to do, there's, there's, there's some on the bottom and there's some on the top. All you need to do is grab the little flathead screwdriver and then just push down the, the little tabs and then eventually just while you're doing that, just pull the grill out, but be gentle with it because the, the grill could be brittle. So be careful on that. So once you remove the grill off of your second generation 4Runner, all you need to do is just lay it down on a safe spot and you will see right in front of your face the AC dryer like you're seeing here, the AC cooling fan, and obviously the condenser. And no, that thing that you're actually looking on the left of the AC dryer, that is not a radiator actually. Well, it kind of is in a way, but um, that's actually your condenser and that's where the refrigerant is hot. So it's actually using an ex external cooling fan to cool down that condenser. So I guess you can call it a radiator in a sense, but in its actual name is the condenser because the actual radiator is actually right behind that condenser and the radiator on the second generation 4Runner is literally the first thing that you see when you pop up the hood pretty much just like any other car all right so since that extra piece of trivia has now been set aside i'm gonna go ahead and start removing this ac dryer which kind of looks like a flashbang grenade so to remove this thing actually it has just three bolts you just basically remove that one bolt that's being that's just hugging the flashbang grenade ac dryer thing and on top of it, there's actually two bolts that's holding down those two hoses. So remove those and you'll be able to remove the AC dryer. So here is the two AC dryers next to each other. The black one is the old one and the silver one is the new one. And like I said earlier, uh, at least put some PAG-40 or PAG-46 oil into the, into the dryer. So at least there's some lubrication in the O-rings and also onto the dryer itself. And then go ahead and reinstall it and you're pretty much done. Okay, here is a, I guess we could say I'm, I'm already done no, with the work. Got the new AC dryer in there. Uh, both high and low pressure sides are already connected already. Um, also on this side, high pressure and low pressure is now reconnected. I'm gonna get myself another straighter valve cover on there. So don't worry about that. Um, so those are now reconnected um, through the firewall and um, and over here where the evaporator core is at it's been replaced the housing is now back and reinstalled with the seven bolts that's holding it in place electrical connectors are now Electrical connectors is reconnected up there, one up there, and uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. And these uh, are for the speaker and the glove box light, which is sitting right over there. I'll reinstall it later on, but at the moment, I think we can say that I did a good job at it so far. And it's a good thing that I actually have some, I took notes on how to do it. Um, you can't read it, but I can, but uh, I, I did write some, uh, wrote down some notes on how to do it. So yeah, now uh, after I have my lunch, I'm going to take this car back to the shop and I'll have them refill the system with new refrigerant and then hopefully this will start blowing cold air. Oh, I also forgot, uh, since I was at the evaporator area, I also replaced the... Uh, uh, the pressure the pressure switch or the pressure sensor and then I also replaced the expansion valve so all of those in this in this section is all brand new um, so yeah so new evaporator core new expansion valve new um, pressure switch and also brand new uh, AC dryer located right there right next to the condenser so, I'm just gonna go have my lunch and then I'll take the, take this truck to the shop and have them refill it with new R134A. Those are all my receipts that I, for all the stuff that I need to work on my AC system on my 4Runner, 
But I just want to let you guys know, at the, as of the time I'm making this video right now, um, good news is I already replaced the AC system uh, with the new evaporator, new expansion valve, and new dryer. And earlier last summer, I've done the AC compressor already. Unfortunately, right now, um, the shop that I had my AC evacuated is currently busy with other cars. So they told me to come by, come swing by tomorrow in the morning once they open uh, to get it all filled up. So I said, okay, I'll do that. So right now, um, I just got something from eBay today. Um, normally I will be, I'm using this Heinz repair manual for my 4Runner. Um, this does actually give me some good information, um, some useful ones actually, but it's not as much as I Oh, been wanting to ask for it. So, on my trip to eBay, <laughs> yeah, on my trip to eBay, I got this. This actually cost me almost a hundred dollars. Hundred bucks for a book, you might ask? Well, yeah, because uh, that's an OEM. This is an OEM. Uh, factory service manual so of course it's gonna be expensive and I thought that hundred bucks was, was gonna be only this but actually I also got this one also in the package so yeah I'll read through it and stuff like that and then yeah cuz that one the other one actually did pretty good you know and gave me some useful information but this one's gonna give me more information anyways uh, so I guess that's it for part one on repairing my AC system. And then in part two, I'll uh, take the car to the shop and uh, see my, what my results are.